So in this video, I'm going to explain how you can add some details to your SAS designs, particularly in the form of this icon here that I created. Um, now, I posted this icon to my Twitter account about a month or two ago, and people really liked it. Um, you know, it got quite a lot of engagement, and um, people were asking, you know, for a kind of tutorial or, you know, some insights into kind of how I put it together. Um, so I'll break it down and then, you know, give some insights along the way. Um, now, the icon itself is pretty simple. Um, now, I didn't this I didn't create the actual icon itself. I'm not an icon designer. So this is from, you know, an icon pack that I was using for this design. And then what I've done is I've created just something kind of um, like a frame with some effects and styling to kind of accentuate it give it some more kind of, um, yeah, design and a bit more kind of visual kind of, um, yeah, aesthetics essentially. Um, now pretty much it's, to break it down, it's a frame um, and then a grid, some stars, a stroke, an inner shadow, and then kind of like this outer kind of drop shadow. So pretty much the frame is you know, a dark color that's, you know, the same as the kind of the, the design, you know, keeping everything consistent. Then you've got a very subtle stroke that's darker than the inner color. Um, now, obviously, from far back, you know, you can't massively see the stroke. It's more the feeling of it, basically, because we've got the inner shadow. So if I remove the stroke, you can see that changes the look and feel of the icon, like, massively. Um, you know, that kind of, that dark stroke just, it blends with the inner shadow to give it that kind of tactile kind of, um, look, essentially. Um, so you've got the, the inner fill, the frame, the outer stroke, and then you've kind of got a bunch of shadows, basically. Um, so it's a bunch of inner shadows. Um, I've basically done them all kind of singles, just, just four inner shadows on each side, um, giving it that kind of blurred kind of tactile kind of like look essentially it's hard to describe but it gives it that kind of look um you can see the kind of values down here that i was using it's just minus one on the y you know a small blur and a slight bit of spread and then i just picked a color that kind of blends well with you know the kind of dark kind of uh you know blacks here basically um with the grid inside Essentially, this is just a vector I got from a community file that, you know, I experimented with the kind of um, the kind of thickness of the lines, um, because obviously if they're too thick or they're too thin, they're not going to kind of feel right at this kind of size of icon, basically. And then all I did was just add a linear gradient to that to give it that sense of depth, that sense of it fading into the kind of background, essentially. Um, the other piece is the stars, um, which is an asset that I actually use in a different um, design, but just to save time, I just dragged dragged one in that I'd already made. Um, essentially, to make the easiest way to make this is just copy a bunch of ellipses, and then there's a plugin called Randomize, and you can just randomize it and just create kind of a natural kind of feel um, and just kind of spray kind of some star vectors uh, onto your kind of Figma file. Um, so essentially, I've just dragged that in. Um, you know, I could have used just a, a small asset or just or just done that. But at the same time, I just dragged it in and just you know the frames clipping it together. Um, <clears throat> now, obviously, the super small ones you're not going to see. This is just left over from the file. You know, the main thing is these ones that you can actually see. And obviously, even from a distance, you still get the feeling. You know, even the small ones, you still get the feeling of the stars. So um, yeah. Um, the last, I believe there's a drop shadow as well. Oh yeah, so the final piece is this kind of outer glow kind of drop shadow. So this is something you'll see used on like input fields a lot. Um, if you're familiar with Tailwind UI and, and similar kits. Um, it's essentially that same idea, but I've just used a grey colour and uh, that matches kind of the icon. And again, it's just giving it that kind of interesting kind of look really you're just adding yeah those subtle details um now someone on twitter kind of said you know um why 
why make it kind of that why add these details if they're not really going to kind of be seen on um a full screen and that's a fair comment to make um but the point of adding these details is it's not always that the user is going to kind of hone in on every little thing and be like oh look i can see this this tiny thing here it's more just layering those little details um and just stacking them on top of each other to just create more of a feeling not essentially that the user needs to see every single pixel on the design it's more the feeling so obviously if i was to remove a lot of these things um although um the icon at, at the core of it still you know looks and feels very similar it's still very different um you know without all the kind of effects and stuff if i put two two versions side by side um it's still you know a big you know there's a big difference there um with kind of the look and feel of it you know if i was to remove the stars and maybe just leave the grid um yeah, it, it still feels very different. Um, so you can kind of get a sense of that. So, yeah, although you're not kind of seeing the details in depth, um, you're still, you know, you're getting that feeling of the icon. And when it comes to the design as a whole, obviously part of the inspiration with the shadows is, you know, this is the kind of style of, of button I've used for the design. So I've kind of emulated that a bit with this, again, to kind of create that kind of visual language for the design. Um, so you've kind of got the similar inner shadows and the outer stroke used on the checkboxes and the primary CTA button. And then that's emulated in the kind of icon. And obviously for the design, this would just be emulated across each one. You could put a new icon in here for each one. And if you wanted to, you know, you could get really techy and change the positions of the stars. For, for you know each each page um, and even mess with <clears throat> the different different grids and things for each page um, to yeah just add another level of kind of detail and variation um, but yeah that's um that's breaking that icon down um, hope you got some value from that and um, yeah thanks <laughs>